Bring in the workers and bring up the rails We gotta lay down the tracks and tear up the trails Open your heart, let the lifeblood flow Gotta get on our way, cause we're moving too slow Bring in the workers and This is Nicholas Keblahan. I'm with Hamilton Light Rail and I'd like to talk to you tonight about modern light rail and the economic case for light rail in Hamilton. So what's light rail? Well, it's fast and convenient. It's fully accessible for the disabled and mobility reduced. It integrates beautifully into the street. It doesn't disrupt the street. It's versatile and flexible, and it grows to meet demand. You can scale it as your system grows. It's clean, quiet, and stylish. It attracts new riders. It runs on clean electric energy. There's no pollution at the street. And it's not your grandmother's streetcar. Most of us are familiar with the TTC in Toronto. This is not the TTC in Toronto. It's much higher capacity. It's low flow floor throughout with barrier free entrance and exit. Quieter and more comfortable. Separated from traffic where possible. And you can avoid ugly overhead wires. So why modern light rail? What can it do for a city? Well, it attracts new investment. It revitalizes urban neighborhoods. It boosts central di business districts by attracting new customers and residents. It's an active form of transit. It improves street life. And it promotes people places. And finally, uh, as you can imagine, it improves air quality and it drastically reduces congestion. You can fit 300 people onto one streetcar. But the point of this uh, presentation is really to point out the economic um, benefits of streetcars. Streetcars in both Europe and the United States have been shown to attract investment, and it's investment that's not attracted by any other form of transit infrastructure. In fact, in the United States, they're thinking of uh, modern light rail more as a form of economic development than as a form of transit investment. So here we've got a comparison of four US cities, and you can see that every single one of those cities has planned to increase its uh, transit network, its streetcar network, and all of them have shown massive returns on investment of up to 4,000%. One of the best known cases is Portland, Oregon, which is uh, rated as one of the most desirable places to live in the US now. In Portland, a $57 million investment in a light rail line running through a neighborhood of abandoned industrial sites has generated over 100 new projects and 2.3 billion in new investment. Over 7,000 new housing units and 4.6 million square feet of office and real retail space. And this is within just a couple of blocks of the light rail line. So one of the competitor systems is uh, bus rapid transit. This is a system that's being used in Mississauga and is often considered in Canadian cities. Ottawa is another example. But what's the difference? Light rail is a little more expensive on the capital costs, as you can see, 3 to 20 million compared with 1 to 15 million for bus rapid transit. The vehicle lifespan is about twice um, that of buses, and the operating cost is actually lower, and that's because the capacity is higher, the lifetime is longer, and um, the number of drivers uh, per passengers is reduced. But a really important point is that bus rapid transit doesn't attract the new riders the way light rail does. And of course, as I said before, buses simply ju just don't attract investment, whereas uh, light rail has been shown in the US to um, attract over 2,000% return on investment. In terms of the uh, quality of uh, the system, light rail is um, low floor, uh, no, no barrier entrance and exit. It's uh, very quiet, it has no pollution at street level, and is a very smooth ride. Finally, why is light rail right for Hamilton? The main reason is that the high capital costs of constructing light rail, which is really its only drawback, will be picked up by the provincial government. In the last election, the government promised to fund two rapid transit lines in Hamilton. It's up to Hamilton to decide whether those are light rail. A 12-kilometer line in Portland, Oregon, attracted $2.3 billion in new investment. That's a line roughly the same length as McMaster to Eastgate Mall. 
light rail in Hamilton could attract $92 million at least in new tax revenue a year. There's some technical questions people often have when you talk about light rail in Hamilton. One is, could it get up at the mountain? Of course it can. Modern light rail can go up grades as high as 8%. The maximum speed is up to 100 kilometers an hour, which is uh, perfect for a high-speed suburban commuting. What about snow and ice? Well, all you need to know is that Quebec City is planning a light rail system, and if you've ever seen Quebec City in February, you know we have nothing to worry about there. It's proven technology. Throughout the US and Europe, LRT systems have been highly successful. LRT is coming to Canada, and Hamilton shouldn't be left behind. Six Canadian cities are already considering LRT, and a new report out of Waterloo has just identified LRT as a preferred solution for their transit system. Toronto has solidified plans for billions of dollars in investment in streetcar lines. And Edmonton um, has abandoned bus rapid transit. Ottawa as well has run into big problems with trying to scale up their bus rapid transit system and believe their decision to rely entirely on bus rapid transit was a mistake. Finally, why is light rail right for Hamilton? Well, it has lower and more predictable operating costs. That's very important for a city uh, with uh, a restricted budget like Hamilton. Finally, it's a really important economic development tool. It will definitely attract billions in new investment and million, generate millions in new taxes. A really um, intriguing possibility for Hamilton that would be a great uh, kickstart for the local manufacturing economy is that when modern light rail systems are commissioned, uh, the government, and in this case the provincial government, usually en um, enforces a large amount of local content. In Portland, Oregon, this has led to the construction of um, manufacturing facilities for streetcars in Portland. The Oregon Iron Works now are constructing streetcars. Hamilton's own National, St National Steel Car can do the same. Finally, light rail helps Hamilton meet its uh, provincially mandated intensi intensification targets, and it would definitely uh, help uh, Hamilton achieve its goal of doubling per capita transit use. It will attract new riders to the system. In the US, they found that in the past 10 years, over 84% of new growth in ridership on transit systems have come from rail-based systems. And finally, it will help insulate Hamilton from exposure to um, peak oil. As you can see, I think that Hamilton needs to grasp this opportunity. We need light rail right now. Bring the workers and bring up the rails. We gotta lay down the tracks and tear up the trails. Open your heart, let the lifeblood flow. Gotta get on our way, cause we're moving too slow. Bring in the workers and bring up the